uh, around vertical axis. And cutting tool moves uh, along the work piece, some surfaces of work piece to make flat or free shape surfaces. For example, uh, here we can see flat surface and here we can see some free shape surface or some complex surface. Okay, maybe uh, you have some questions. Um, um, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe a little bit these chips. Uh, I guess some a lot of material accumulates over time. Can you actually reuse the material that uh, was discarded with the chips afterwards? Mm. Uh, if I understand correctly, you are talking about uh, recycling uh, the removed material. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, you're right. Uh, materials. Uh, or chips, they are recycled. Uh, why? Well, first of all, uh, we try to let's say to be maybe it's not right in English. Uh, in Russian, we say we try to be economic. Uh, it's not very good to say in English. Uh, there should be another phrase, but we try to also reduce the cost of production. And uh, one of the uh, methods is uh, reusing the chips. But usually, we cannot reuse the chip on the same manufacturing plant, on the same factory uh, uh, where we make engines or rockets. It is another factory, usually, which uh, will. Uh, take the chips, uh, take this material, and uh, remake them uh, or make some new work pieces from this material. Uh, it's a difficult, it's a difficult process because we not only press or melt the chips, but we also need to uh, clean this material uh, made from chips. Uh, so in other words, to make the material, uh, there is a difficult process of recycling the chips. So it's another uh, factory uh, which makes the recycling process. <clears throat> okay. Ah, okay. And also, also uh, Materials that are used for making rockets and uh, engines, they are usually very expensive. That's why also we should uh, recycle. Uh, do you have an additional question? Okay, yeah, uh, I don't have any additional question, but thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Yes. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> another process is uh, grinding process uh, and there will be some examples for example uh, um, cylindrical grinding we can see the workpiece which rotates uh, the workpiece is clamped uh, in the special fixture on the machine so also rotation comes from the machine and we have cutting tool which also uh, rotates and moves along the surfaces of the workpiece. So cutting tool forms the final uh, shape of our final form of our part. And also we can uh, take into account flat grinding process. Uh, in this example, grinding wheel rotates and uh, <clears throat> uh, Grinding wheel moves along the surface to form flat surfaces of the work pieces. Here we can see a set of work pieces uh, of set of work pieces to improve productivity of grinding or to make uh, one dimension and to make uh, uh, some parts in one setup. So it's also an example of increasing the productivity of grinding.
OK. So um, we discovered some basic processes of cutting, some the uh, general characteristics, and now we, are talk we will talk about technological system, technological system or the system which provides the manufacturing processes, one manufacturing process for, for, for every system. Okay, it consists of, technological system consists of machine tool, uh, then fixture or some clamping device, workpiece, and cutting tool. Uh, there is some um, intersection of words in different terms, for example, machine tool and cutting tool. Uh, machine tool provides all the movements in the technological system, rotation, linear movement, uh, and the cutting tool is a tool that cuts material from the surface. So the, the intersection in the word tool, that's why I will try to use a simple word, machine. But to be more precise, it, it is usually called machine tool. Uh, OK, let's talk about these four parts. The first uh, part is uh, machine. And here we can see the example of turn mill machine. Uh, which means that we can make turning processes and milling processes. Uh, it's a complex machine. Well, let's talk about some parts of it. We can see the fixture on the machine. Uh, the first fixture. Here we can see additional support, additional fixture. And uh, fixture number three. Steady rest, which holds the workpiece. We can see the workpiece a long shaft, uh, some kind of long shaft, which is machined uh, in this example. And this part of machine holds the cutting tool. Here you can see the cutting tool. This is a CNC uh, machine, which means computer numeric control. So the all movements of the machine are controlled numerically by means of CNC device, CNC system. This is the main, the main. This is the main, the part, of the is the interface for the operator. Or, Bench the machine, uh, so we can see the screen and some buttons uh, for <clears throat> setting up the machine for uh, starting the process and so on. So, in other words, we have some program before the machine, and we should download this program to the machine, clamp the workpiece set up all the tools for the machine and then we simply start the process and machine makes every other actions without uh, without any man uh, 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 which <clears throat> uh, without any person to uh, and finally, after the machining process, we will get the final, the final part. <coughs> okay. Um, Some examples sorry, of. I have a question. Uh, um, yes, please. Ah, uh, yeah. Actually, my question is not very important. <laughs> I'm just, but I'm just curious. Um, why do we need a big machine to cut a small piece of, uh, of, uh, of, a box of uh, iron? You are right. Yes, of course, you are right. Uh, we don't need such a big machine for small uh, parts. Uh, it's a good question. S small parts, we should use smaller machines uh, because uh, uh, 
no, let's say uh, let's say we have some vehicle for our, uh, some car for five persons and we have some bus for 30 persons of course the bus uh, will uh, cost the cost of, of the bus will be higher uh, because we have uh, uh, additional materials some additional chairs inside and so on and if we are talking about the machine we have the same uh, the same thing so the bigger the machine the higher the price of the machine and uh, the higher the price of the machine part will be so if we need to make some very small part we should use a small machine with the area uh, where we can move our cutting tool with a small area which is close to the final part dimensions and in this case when where we have a big part uh, we should use of course a big machine because we cannot simply made it on a small machine uh, okay yes thanks a lot so, <laughs> so your yes uh, good question thank you Oh, well, I suppose that's all on the size of machine. Uh, of course, uh, such types of machine uh, they are low numbered. There are not a lot of such machines on the factories usually. So usually factories uh, have a lot of small machines uh, they have uh, less uh, number of medium-sized machines and some big machines uh, because we usually make some smaller parts uh, <clears throat> okay and now we are going to discuss uh, different types of fixtures. Of course, there are a lot of different fixtures, some uh, universal fixtures, some uh, special fixtures, uh, but I will talk only about some examples. <clears throat> the first one is a three jaw chuck, which is usually used for turning, cylindrical grinding processes, uh, and part is clamped using these uh, three chucks which moves simultaneously and clamps the part another example is uh, million wise uh, million wise uh, which is used usually for milling operations sometimes for flat grinding operations uh, and uh, there are also two jaws Uh, which will clamp the part uh, using the clamping process is made using this screw which is connected with the part holding the movable jaw so in other words in other words uh, here we should i suppose i suppose discuss not the fixtures itself but uh, the reliability of clamping uh, <clears throat> you know when we cut some uh, layer of material from the surface cutting forces occur and cutting forces are very high so uh, we cannot hold in almost all processes, we cannot hold uh, the workpiece using our hands. The forces are very high. So we should clamp uh, our workpiece reliably. That's why we should use some reliable fixtures, which uh, will apply high forces for clamping the workpiece. Okay, here we can see some example of the workpiece. Uh, of course, there are a lot of parts, and uh, usually work pieces are 
very close to the final parts by the but they have some additional material on every source. Uh, here, I would like to show you the part from the compressor of <clears throat> turbojet engine, some turbojet engine. Uh, turbojet engines are usually used in uh, uh, for aviation, for aircrafts. Uh, so we don't use some turbojet engines for rockets, but in rockets uh, we can encounter some similar uh, parts usually with some some aerodynamical surfaces. So this is the airfoil, and it is the surface which interacts with the gas. Uh, it, compressor is a part that is a unit that should compress the air. So it's a special uh, part which is designed by special methods. That's why we can see some complex geometry. Some complex geometry. <clears throat> and here you can see the, uh, this part, final part. And on the right, you can see the workpiece the workpiece itself and the final part inside the workpiece. So you can see additional thickness of material on uh, every surface. Okay. And finally, we need some cutting tool. Uh, this is an example of cutting tool for turning process, which can be used on turning machine. Let's discuss it. We have a cutting insert, which is clamped mechanically to the tool holder, ray tool holder. Then the tool holder is clamped in the adapter, and the adapter is clamped on the machine. So this is a universal cutting tool. It, it can be used on different turning machines, and this adapter provides clamping the, of universal cutting tool on the uh, specified turning machine. So this part is for clamping on the specified turning machine. Next example uh, is the cutting tool for drilling. You can see here different types of drills. I suppose you encountered some uh, drills uh, at your home. Uh, so I suppose you have some drill and uh, example for putting, putting shelves on, on the wall, shelves for the books on the wall, putting some like, pictures, uh, some frames and so on. You need to make a hole in the wall and for making the holes uh, we usually use drills uh, drills for walls are uh, in general they are similar uh, but they have some special special uh, cutting geometry and here we can see uh, drilling cutting tools for metal cutting and you can see there are different types uh, <clears throat> of drills which are used for different types of materials. We will cover this topic uh, a little bit later about different materials. Uh, but now you can see that the geometry of drill differs. Also, I can uh, tell you that uh, the initial color of drill is uh, uh, gray. So this is the initial color of drill material. And here we can see some different colors. Uh, these drills uh, have special coating on it, a coating which uh, provides better performance of, cutting, uh, of all cutting tools. So we have special geometry for special for some type of materials we machine, and also we have special coatings for special uh, for 
different types of materials. Okay, uh, now some examples of milling cutting tools. <clears throat> and we can see on the right, uh, milling cutting tool with interchangeable inserts. So this is the tool body. Tool body. And here we can see, let's say rectangular inserts, five rectangular inserts. Uh, will, which will, will will cut the material, will remove. <clears throat> uh, and on the left, you can see solid uh, tools, which are made from one piece of uh, material, from solid piece of material. So we can see different shapes of cutting tools. Uh, this example. Milling cutting tools also uh have coating so this dark color is the color of coating also on the insert uh, we have coating special coating for increasing performance another example is example on grinding tools uh, <clears throat> Here you can see two different cutting tools. Uh, the material of uh, cutting tools uh, is different, uh, but the shapes the, the shape is uh, the same. This example. Uh, talking about grinding tools, so do you have some grinding tools at home? I suppose yes. And maybe not in such a shape, the shape of cylinder, or not in the shape of wheel, but in the shape of uh, sand, sanding paper. Sanding paper, which can be used for uh, sharpening the knife, for example, or sharpening some tools, or uh, grinding and polishing some surfaces. Uh, so the material, the grains on the sanding paper are approximately the same that are used for uh, the cut for the grinding cutting tool. Okay, do you have some questions on machines, tools, uh, pictures? Okay, so let's discuss some part materials. <clears throat> uh, in other words, uh, when we make some part, when we design some part, uh, we usually understand the material uh, of this part. Because if we make some design usually, and we do not uh, know the material that should be used for this part, or some problems, can uh, be encountered. Why? Because every material has the strengths. Let's try to, let me try to give some example of uh, material strengths, uh, some material properties. Uh, for example, for example, uh, you have uh, a, a match, match uh, which is used, uh, which is made of uh, wood and is used for getting the fire. Yes, this match. And uh, you can also take uh, some nail, for example, some nail or, or some wire of the same thickness as the thickness of match. Uh, and if you apply some force, you will break the match the match uh, but if you apply the same force to the nail uh, you cannot uh, break it using the same force you should apply higher force to break or to deform the nail talking about wire made from for example aluminum uh, applying approximately the same force 
will not break the wire of aluminium made of aluminium but it will deform the wire so uh, there are a lot of i mean there are a lot of different properties of materials and of, also they have different strengths uh, that's why when we design some parts we take into account the material uh, for this part <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, what are the main materials that can be uh, used for making parts for engines and rockets? <clears throat> the first one is uh, steel, carbon steel, uh, which is a composure of iron and carbon. Uh, there are different types of steels, uh, but usually we have less than 1% of carbon and the rest is iron uh, <clears throat> it, it is one of the simplest uh, alloys simplest materials uh, that are used for parts for different parts in our everyday life also uh, next example uh, or next group is alloy steels uh, and what is alloy usually alloy is a composure uh, of iron carbon with addition of some other materials for example we can add uh, uh, nickel chromium titanium aluminium tungsten and some other materials and by using this, these additions we improve the properties of steels so in other words uh, alloy steels are usually better in simple words they are better but uh, the cost is higher next group is stainless steels uh, stainless steels it's a composure of also iron iron is the basis uh, carbon and additional materials uh, to make the stainless steels we usually use chromium with a percentage approximately approximately 10 and higher percent of chromium uh, where you can encounter some stainless steels in the kitchen so some kitchenware uh, knives uh, forks spoons and so on uh, they are made of stainless steels because if you don't use stainless steels uh, they will uh, get rusty and you cannot use uh, these parts uh, for using them in the kitchen for eating with them. <clears throat> Approximately the same history with the parts for rocket engines. If we don't use uh, stainless steel steels in some purposes, uh, some aggressive, aggressive aggressive materials will corrode will do damage to the uh, parts which should be made of steels but were made from other steels uh, from other uh, materials so stainless steels are also cheaper than alloy steels and also carbon steel. next group alum uh, aluminum alloys so this is uh, american uh, spelling of the word in european spelling there should be uh, i letter before m uh, al uh, aluminum alloys the basis is aluminum and we have some additional but some additional elements to improve properties uh, sometimes we can also use magnesium alloys. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
let's return here. And the main advantages of these two groups is the weight properties. So the weight of aluminum and magnesium uh, or density, first of all, is very low. That's why the weight of parts made of aluminum alloys or magnesium alloys is uh, lower, approximately three times lower than the part made of uh, carbon steels. So when we have some low forces, we can use aluminum alloys and magnesium alloys because the weight will, will be lower. And uh, talking about uh, rockets, we need uh, the lower weight of the rocket because in this case, we will take uh, uh, we will take how it's called. Mm. We will take the uh, higher load on the rocket, so we will take uh, more fuel, for example, and fly uh, at the longer distance, or we will take uh, more, uh, for example, more techniques or. <laughs> additional astronaut for example uh, that's why uh, at the same time uh, we are talking about two different uh, two opposite uh, problems the first problem is high reliability and high strength of the rocket and all parts and uh, the opposite problem is the uh, lower weight so uh, talking about our examples of for example nail if you if you take the nail uh some nail with small diameter you will break it with your hands um, or you will deform it with your hands and if you take a thick nail uh, probably you will will not deform this nail using uh, <clears throat> your hands so the same uh, problem is the parts uh, on the other on on other hand on one hand uh, we should make big parts because in this case the strength of part will be higher but on another hand uh, the part should be <laughs> smaller because the weight would be smaller and uh, it is uh, beneficial for the rocket uh, so it's uh, mm, let's say fast introduction to the problem of designing every uh, aircraft vehicles and every rocket week okay uh, and also part materials some part of materials uh, we can uh, name them as a group of difficult to machine materials so which means it's they are very difficult <clears throat> to cut uh, they are hardened steels they are heat resistant steels heat resistant alloys and titanium heat resistant steels are based on iron uh, heat resistant alloys are based on nickel sometimes chromium and uh, polypden and titanium alloys <clears throat> titanium alloys uh, they are based on titanium uh, the main advantage of titanium alloys is also the density of titanium that's why the alloy uh, will be uh, be uh, the weight of the part made of titanium alloy will be lower. Uh, talking about steels, it would it would be approximately approximately two times lower than the same part made of steel. Uh, but also, titanium is a material that withstands high loads, relatively high loads, and also. This material is, uh, let's say, neutral to some aggressive liquids, 
uh, and so on. Um, but I suppose you know that titanium is a very expensive material. So, for example, some military uh, aircraft, uh, they have a lot of parts made of titanium alloys, but also in this case, they are very expensive. Okay. Uh, you know, I should mention, of course, some additional materials. And what are they? <clears throat> additional materials. Also, some copper alloys. Copper alloys can be used for some uh, purposes. And uh, a very range group of materials is uh, a group of composite materials. Some examples, carbon reinforced fiber plastic, glass reinforced fiber plastic. Uh, so uh, here's some examples of composite materials. Uh, <clears throat> So the main uh, one of the main advantages of composite materials is the density, uh, which means that the uh, weight of parts made of composite materials is relatively low. Uh, that's why you can you can encounter some uh, usage of uh, composite materials in aviation, in aircrafts, uh, in some uh, racing, sport racing cars. Uh, you can encounter uh, usage of such parts made of uh, composite materials and so on. Mm. You, you, you also helmets, uh, for racing, the main examples. <clears throat> okay, so now we will talk about some uh, examples of machining. So let me return to the slide number two. You can see here the process of machining. And you can see that uh, the chip has the same color as the main part. This is a turning process. Uh, and here we can see some, I suppose, alloy steel in, uh, during machining. And here you can see the example of hardened steel part turning. Uh, talking about this part, uh, this is the part for some for the transmission of a car. Of a car, so it's a gear, a shaft with a gear. And uh, but the main topic here is the temperature of cutting. You can see the chip has uh, an orange color which means the temperature of the chip is very high is uh, is close the temperature is close to the temperature of melting of material so in machining difficult to cut materials the temperatures are very high uh, and this means that the load on the turning tool is very uh, is also high so, in other words, tools, tool life is lower than the tool life for some simple materials like aluminum materials, carbon steels, and so on. Uh, okay, maybe you have some questions on materials that are used for different parts.
Okay, uh, let's talk now about uh, tool materials. So to make uh, the tool, we need uh, the material with higher hardness. Uh, for example, a knife on the kitchen, the hardness of knife is very high. Uh, for example, if you try to cut one knife by another knife, uh, you will fail because the hardness is similar. So you cannot uh, cut a, a knife by another knife. Uh, <clears throat> approximately the same picture is with materials, with machining of materials. We need a tool material that will be harder than the material of the uh, workpiece. Okay, what are the main uh, materials used for cutting tools? The first one is high speed steel. Uh, so sometimes you can use steels for cutting, especially we can use them for cutting some soft carbon steels, aluminum alloys, magnesium alloys. Uh, <clears throat> but now nowadays, high speed steels are usually used for manual tools, manual tools some example of manual tools maybe you know them uh, for example file for example for cutting thread uh, tape for cutting thread uh, and so on examples of uh, hand tools next uh, group of materials is a group of cemented carbide cemented carbide uh, the main material here is tungsten and tungsten is a, a rare material so the tools made of carbide are very expensive but they provide higher productivity in other words they can we can cut faster with uh, these tools uh, that's why <clears throat> The cost of tool increases, but when we cut faster, the cost of process decreases. So finally, we will have uh, some uh, similar cost as we use, uh, as we can uh, see, uh, so in case we use high speed steels. And Sometimes the cost of part made by carbide uh, cutting tools is lower because we apply higher cutting forces and uh, the uh, price of tool decreases, but the price of cutting process, oh, I'm sorry, the price of tool increases and the price of cutting decreases drastically because of fast cutting. Okay, the next group is ceramic material. <clears throat> oh, it's uh, it is uh, the group of material that is used for some turning milling processes, but the properties of this material is not sufficient in some cases. That's why we can use cemented. Uh, carbides but ceramic uh, sometimes provide higher uh, ease of cutting higher productivity and also uh, ceramic materials can be uh, cheaper than carbide so in future uh, ceramic materials uh, will uh, be used in uh, almost all cases of uh, machining process and some let's say special materials they are cubic boron nitride uh, cubic boron is a, syn a synthetic material uh, and also we can apply diamond materials but usually we apply also synthetic diamond for metal cutting processes 
Okay, I suppose we need a break now because uh, uh, it's too difficult to talk about uh, to uh, hear about different materials, different tools, and so on. Uh, maybe you have some questions. Okay, let's make a break. And I suppose uh, we'll make a break uh, to, or, on 10 minutes. Okay, yes, see you in 10 minutes. See you later.
sí. <clears throat> so we discussed some materials for uh, the parts, the final parts, uh, some materials that can be used for manufacturing. Uh, you know, in every group, every group, uh, there are a lot of different materials uh, with different properties, uh, but the designation of material is usually made according to uh, national standards for example uh, in russia we have we use ghost a uh, group of ghost standards uh, there are as i know standards in france germany uh, japan and other countries and sometimes there are international standards that are designated by ISO, International Organization for Standardization. And materials can be uh, designated using this, uh, some groups of inter uh, uh, ISO standards. <clears throat> uh, sometimes there are similar materials, sometimes there are no uh similar materials in different uh, standards but the groups uh, are the same for, for every country it's this way okay and then we discuss two materials that should be harder so they can cut uh the materials or make uh, the materials of work piece uh, now we we should uh, we will see the video not not now uh, on this side there should be a video but we will see the video later and now we will talk about some result of machining uh, we discussed that we have a cutting process when we remove some surface some, some material from the uh, workpiece but uh, the result is not only the removed material or the machine surface uh, itself, but the result is assessed by a lot of different parameters. So the main parameters are dimensional precision, uh, surface roughness, surface hardness, residual uh, stress, some additional chemical, physical uh, parameters, and so on. Uh, we will talk now, and we will have some examples on dimensional precision and surface roughness uh, only. Some other parameters are very specific and they require some technical background on this topic. Uh, so dimensional precision, <clears throat> uh, what is dimensional precision? Uh, let's talk about cone, for example. So uh, you can go to the website of manufacturer of the cone, and you will see uh, uh, some parameters of the cone. For example, height, width, and uh, thickness of the cone. And they will be in millimeters. For example, the height of the phone is uh, 120 millimeters. Okay, but if, if we take a ruler, for example, uh, we will measure the height, we will see, yes, 120 millimeters. But there are some special measuring uh, tools, measuring techniques. And if we measure the height of the phone, we will see that the real height is 100, for example, 119 millimeters, point 
25, for example. Yes. So the real height differs from the height on the website because for every dimension we have a tolerance. In other words, the tolerance is a minimum and maximum value of some parameter. For example, for the phone, it could be, I don't know the real uh, parameters. I will give you an example. Uh, uh, <clears throat> for example, minimum height can be uh, 119 millimeters, 0.9, and maximum height can be 120 millimeters, 0.1. So the tolerance, is the difference between minimum and maximum is 0 0.2 millimeters. Uh, so why we have tolerance? Because the world is not ideal. And uh, when we try to make some precise uh, dimension, some precise part, we cannot achieve the precision without tolerance, because uh, we have some nominal value, 120 millimeters in this example. But when we make a part, real part, we will come uh, very close to this nominal value, but the real dimension will differ from the nominal value. Uh, so it's another problem, it's a complex question of manufacturing, but it is a result of manufacturing. We should make the final surface inside uh, minimum and maximum values, inside this boundary. Uh, I will give you now the example. Uh, the example is uh, on turning machining, <clears throat> turning machining, and we can see here the part. I'm sorry, not part, uh, workpiece. So we, we will machine the workpiece and uh, finally get the part. Uh, here we can see special special holes, uh, which should be used for clamping, and these two gray parts are special fixturing devices. So we have hole here and the same hole here. And these two conical, uh, two, two conical fixtures uh, will clamp the part. Okay, now we see the part clamped and we can turn on the rotation of the part. So here we can see rotation, uh, rotations per minute, number of rotations per minute. And here you can see cutting tool. This is the cutting insert and the tool holder. Uh, the feed is the movement of cutting tool uh, along the axis of rotation. Uh, and dashed line dashed line shows the final surface after machine. So uh, let's see the ideal machining process. Uh, our cutting tool is in feed direction and you can see that we have the machined surface and chips uh, that uh, fly out of the zone of machine. The tool in the middle the process at the end of the process and uh, the tool machined all the workpiece and we finally have the part. The part is, well, let's say, ideal. Yes, the part is ideal. <clears throat> but really we will have such picture. Uh, at the start of machining we can see that also, we remove the material and see chip, but the force during the process acts, uh, of course, on the tool, and from the tool uh, it acts on the workpiece, and the workpiece will be deformed due to the action of force. Uh, 
No, I suppose uh, the resolution is uh, key, and you see the deformation of the uh, <clears throat> part, the deformation of the, of the workpiece. And here, the deformation type is uh, like a smile, say. So it's a smile, or like an arc. But uh, the value of deformation is not very high. In other words, we, we see a small deformation. But the feed of cutting tool uh, is a vector, is a uh, cutting tool moves according to the straight line. So after machine, here we can see a straight surface. Let's see uh, the tool at the middle of machining process. Uh, here we also see a straight surface, but due to deformation of the workpiece, you can see that here we remove a lower thickness of material. Uh, the thickness of material is lower relative to the nominal value. Now, as an example, according to our calculations, for example, we should remove uh, two millimeters from uh, the side of uh, this. But due to deformation, we remove, for example, one point nine millimeters. So we remove lower thickness of material. Uh, and after the process, after the process of machining, uh, here the deformation is low, and also here the deformation is low. That's why we removed two millimeters approximately. And here we removed low thickness of material. That's why the diameter here is higher than the diameter on the ends of the shaft. So we can see the error of machining, machining and uh, it is called barrel type, barrel type uh, error. E error. <clears throat> and finally, we can see the picture with boundaries, minimum dimension and maximum dimension. And you can see that minimum dimension, the line of minimum dimension, and the line of maximum dimension were not crossed by the contour of the machined surface. So the contour of machined surface is inside the boundaries. In this case, we can say that the part is good and a good part can be used in assembly, it can be used in engine, for example. But if the deformation uh, will be higher, so the contour of uh, machined surface will be uh, higher than the maximum value, for example. In this case, the part is, is defective. It, it cannot be used in engine. Uh, maybe it's a complex uh, explanation. It's a complex uh, question uh, because really students, uh, students, students uh, talk about this error on. on the fourth year of education. So in other words, if you have questions, please ask. Maybe I will try to give another uh, example or discuss in other words. Um, yes, can you also, is it possible to compensate for this error, like in our example, to um, kind of pretend to make a concave piece and with the error then in the end it will be completely straight. Is that also possible? Yes, yes. Very good. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it's, it is one of the 
uh, methods to make better parts. You are right. Uh, so, for example, one of the methods, uh, one of the methods that are simpler uh, is the method of adding here additional support. In this case, the deformation will be lower. Uh, it is possible to add additional support. Uh, compensation is also a good uh, method, but compensation uh, is, a, is a complex method because uh, you should know to compensate something, you should know the deformation before the machine. And uh, now there are no uh, there are no reliable techniques to uh, calculate the deformation. We can calculate deformation in uh, some, let's say, in some simple cases. Uh, it is called static loading. Uh, it means that you have some uh, have some uh, part, and you act in a vertical direction by some uh, force. The simple, the simple example, if you take some weight, for example, uh, two kilograms and put it here, it will be a static loading. So the load is the same. In this case, it is very uh, easy to calculate the deformation. But talking about machine and manufacturing processes, it is not easy to calculate deformation because of the speed of process. Uh, in other words, if we take, if we take, if we measure the force and calculate the deformation in static, as a static uh, load, uh, we will have some value deformation, but in machining, the, the deformation uh, will be different because of uh, the process is uh, the process is very fast. <clears throat> also, also, uh, this is this is a simple shape of part. Okay, for simple shapes of parts, we can also calculate deformations. But when we are talking about some complex parts, for example, for example, this part, this is a complex shape. Hello, Anna, Yaroslav, привет. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a complex shape. For complex shapes, it is not easy to uh, calculate deformations for every points on the surface and to compensate them. Да нет, мы же их пускаем вот по по этой ссылке, пускай он контакт пришлёт и мы их добавим в общий чат и всё. Ну, контакты, да, там я не знаю, почты можно, и мы им сбросим ссылку. Я думаю, что не надо с них брать никакую оплату. Я согласна. Нет, нет, нет. Uh, нет, барьеры нету, просто тут как бы вопрос в том, uh, что... Can you hear the voice? Я почему мотивационное письмо? Yes, I Yes, I think one, one person is not muted, right? Yeah. Нормально? Он почты прислал, мы вышли, мы все... А, все, все, все. Okay. <laughs> we have guests. Uh, so, in other words, compensation is uh, also a good uh, a good method. Uh, so. 
Compensation is a good good method uh, when you try to use other simpler methods uh, and you want to achieve higher precision. Uh, so in this case, compensation works, and now there are a lot of uh, works, res uh, articles devoted to uh, different types of compensation, how to compensate uh, the error of machining. <clears throat> so we're, we're talking about quality parameters. Ah, excuse me, I turned off the presentation. we were talking about uh, quality parameters uh, we discussed dimensions dimensional precision but there are a lot of additional parameters uh, and one of them says simple parameters that we can uh, see the difference uh, it is called roughness Roughness. Uh, roughness, it is a micro geometry uh, of the surface. And here you can see the example of different pictures of machine of machine surfaces, machined by different methods. The first column is uh, surfaces that were machined on a horizontal milling machine, on vertical uh, milling machine and the uh, surface is machined by turn uh, here you can see parameters that describe the height of uh, the surface uh, not the height the roughness of the surface so they are specific but you can see that this is a rough surface and uh, this roughness is measured in micrometers. And this is a better surface. It is close to polished surface, surface after polishing. And it looks like a mirror finished surface. So it's, it's it, in other words, it's a smooth, uh, smooth uh, surface. Uh, <clears throat> for example, if you have some um, ergonomical surface, uh, the surface that you will uh, touch by your hands, it is all always better to use a uh, polished surface. Uh, but sometimes uh, we need surfaces with special uh, roughness for example to hold oil for uh, in friction uh, pairs uh, in pairs with friction uh, we need some special uh, surface of uh, some special roughness which will hold the oil uh, in it uh, for some optical devices we need a mirror finish with uh, surface where we cannot see some let's say scratches some grooves uh, a surface uh, that is uh, like a mirror so it depends on the uh, and it depends on the part <coughs> But roughness is also a result of machining. As you can see, uh, for example, for turning, we have different roughness after machining. It depends on uh, cutting tool, on uh, speed of rotation, on feed of cutting tool, and so on. Uh, 
Okay, another point here is micro machining. Micro machining is an uh, interesting uh, technology when we machine with very small tools. The dimensions of tools, of cutting part of tools, is between 0 0.1 millimeters and up to one millimeter. Uh, so you can see an example of micro tool and uh, According to this example, the dimension, the diameter of cutting part is 0 0.2 millimeters. So it's a very small, uh, very small tool uh, to machine very small holes, for example, yes, holes uh, in special devices. <clears throat> so our The technique itself, itself, uh, on other, uh, on one hand, we can see that uh, our not technique, our machines, they are getting bigger, uh, heavier, they are getting more powerful. Uh, but on another hand, we also try to use some micro devices. Uh, micro machines and so on so to achieve high performance even in some big machines we need some very small parts for example for fuel in, uh, fuel systems of an engine we sometimes need very small holes so they can be machined with with micro uh, tools and according to these small tools or these small holes we will make better fuel mm, uh, we will improve the mixing process of fuel and air for example and the process of burning will be will be better uh, and in this case we will have higher fuel efficiency and uh, also we can get higher uh let's say how higher power power of an engine and so on also such type of tools are used in medical uh, in some medical applications okay let's make a break from me uh in the leaf plus and we will turn to the video we will uh, you will see the video uh, which was made uh, in our manufacturing center in our university uh, and uh, here you will see some machines that we have in our university and that are used for real projects in engines and some other parts for different applications. This is uh, a turning machine or it's also called a lathe and this is a turning machine with milling function so uh, we can make a turning process for the workpiece with uh, turning cutting tools or we can also set up a drilling or milling tool and make more complex uh, part on one single machine. This is the setup on a milling machine uh, fixture on the table of milling machine and workpiece which will be the part after the machining process.
And here we can see uh, the real machine in process. A milling machine cuts uh, a part of a stamp. And of course we see cooling liquid here and we don't see uh, real cutting, but it's how the real process looks like. And here we can see the examples of uh, real parts that uh, were machined uh, in our uh, manufacturing center. Uh, these parts are for uh, different devices, uh, technical devices. For example, uh, here we can see some parts for airplane. Also micro engine, parts of micro engine, combustion chamber, uh, shaft, some other parts. Uh, also, <clears throat> uh, we can see here some tools. For example, this is an electrode uh, machining a gear, so that's why it's made in the shape of gear. Uh, also, tools for forming some uh, plastic parts, uh, an example is also for production some gear, plastic gear. Uh, we can see uh, real blades for aircraft engine uh, that should be mounted into compressor of engine. Also we produce different cutting tools, uh, tungsten carbide cutting tools by means of grinding, grinding technique. And also we can see some parts uh, that were machined by student. In machine they made uh, uh, an impeller, a kind of impeller and a blisk. And it was their project uh, for their master's degree. So it was a video from our manufacturing center and uh, in this video you saw the process of cutting of 
this part uh, outside cylinder. Uh, the part was before cutting this bigger hole, the hole was smaller. Uh, the video, but the movement was according to this helix trajectory uh, to machine outside the cylinder of this part. Uh, the process, the chip uh, you saw was very small because the uh, surface was machined previously. That's why we can uh, turn it, turn on the process without being liquid. Uh, so, uh, turning off the cooling liquid provides uh, the visibility of process. But usually when we machine, some parts we use cooling liquids and uh, uh, sometimes we cannot see how uh, cutting tools move when they cut some surfaces because uh, the amount of cooling liquid is uh, uh, excessive. <clears throat> uh, Okay, but now we will discuss the programming. Uh, so we have some part and we have some model, three-dimensional model of the part. <coughs> right. uh, and uh, to machine this part, uh, we, choo we should choose some cutting tool. We make a model of cutting tool and then uh, using special software, uh, we need to make tool trajectory to build tool trajectory for machine different surfaces. Uh, here you can see the tool trajectory for machine in the boss outside cylindrical surface of this part. Uh, after modeling the machine or after making the trajectory, uh, we should build also the workpiece and uh, now we can make the simulation process of how cutting tool will machine this surface so we can see the surface uh, after machining the next step for this part this part. This is the final part. And we cannot machine all the surfaces at the same time. Some surfaces sh should be used for clamping. Uh, when we machine the root, the root, we clamp by airfoil. In the software, we don't see usually clamping devices we don't build clamping devices uh, to reduce the time of programming uh, but we can see <clears throat> uh, the result of root machining and after the root is machined uh, we have we should program the airfoil machine here we can see the rough machining process so we re remove uh, approximately 90% of material from the surfaces in rough machining process. And here we can see gray features that uh, hold uh, our part. <clears throat> uh, okay, this is the model of airfoil semi finish machine. and the modeling of airfoil finish machine so this is the final machining process of the airfoil so this green surface was machined and pink surface was the surface before the machine so uh, before the machining before the simulation uh, all the surface of airfoil was pink and we can see the a process in the middle, simulation in the middle of cutting the airfoil. 
Uh, and using this simulation, we also try to uh, understand some maybe errors in uh, trajectory to understand uh, if we have some collision of cutting tool and part or cutting tool and uh, fixture. So we try to find some errors and eliminate the errors. And finally, after modeling, <clears throat> after modeling, we can see, we can make some analysis and see unmachined regions or regions with excessive material. So here you can see that surfaces with, with dark blue color are surfaces where we have excessive material. So we should make another tool trajectory to, um, let's say, clean these surfaces and make <clears throat> the final part. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you for your attention. And now I would like to, sh to, to show the progress. Progress. So today we covered the topic of machining of materials. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> this is the topic about mostly material removing processes. Uh, <clears throat> there are some processes when we, let's say when the amount, the volume of material will be the same before the process and after the process. For example, uh, some time, some types of in sheet metal stamping, sheet metal forging. When we deform the sheet and make some uh, some part, the the volume of material will be the same. Maybe the thickness of uh, walls will be lower. Sometimes it yes, it, it can be lower. Uh, we can make different shapes, but uh, the volume is the same. In uh, machining, in metal cutting processes, the volume of uh, initial work is reduces, and the final volume is lower than the initial volume of the work is. And uh, you will talk about other techniques much uh, other manufacturing techniques and uh, further lessons but it will be uh, <clears throat> another lecture as a topic and now please uh, ask your questions about machining processes um yeah one little question um how long does the machining take for example for such a small turbine blade part how long does it take oh okay <clears throat> you know it depends on different different questions uh usually we try to reduce the time for every operation for every part because uh, productivity is one of the key points of every manufacturing process talking about some real examples <clears throat> uh, let me turn to presentation and I will try to give you some examples. Uh, the diameter, the diameter of the of the workpiece here is uh, approximately sixty millimeters, and the uh, length of the part is uh, one hundred twenty millimeters approximately. <clears throat> the workpiece was like this. The thickness of the workpiece at this section is uh, 20, 24 millimeters. 24 millimeters. 
and the thickness of after rough machining is uh, approximately eight millimeters so now you uh, know the dimensions and the thickness of material that was removed uh, so approximately uh, it was removed the thickness of material removed from one side was uh, eight mil uh, eight millimeters the process of machining of this surface this surface on one side and on another side it took uh, let me remember oh, as I remember approximately uh, three hours but the material here is titanium alloy so uh, we cannot work uh, with high speeds when we machine titanium because uh, uh, because our cutting tool will fail after short time of machining and uh, the machining process will be uh, very expensive because we need to change uh, our cutting tool very often so if we will uh, if we will make the machine in, uh, of steel uh, approximately it can be uh, two times faster if we make machine of alum uh, aluminum alloy the same part of aluminum alloy it can be uh, three four and up to ten times faster so alum uh, aluminum alloys are easier in machining process <clears throat> so talking about this example final machine of the airfoil it took six hours so usually rough processes they are faster but the uh, quality after rough machining is lower and here we need to get final quality, final precision, good precision. Uh, that's why the machining is slower. Uh, so it took uh, six hours to machine this uh, surface from the both sides. Okay, please ask the questions. Yeah, thank you already for your comprehensive answer. Thanks very much. Yes, it's an example, uh, you know, it's an example of milling process and the milling of titanium uh, part. Uh, but sometimes in some processes for simple parts, um, I don't know what to, to say what example to choose. Uh, um, So let's imagine some turning machining process, turning machining process of, of this part. So the, di the diameter here is approximately, uh, I, I suppose approximately 40 millimeters. Uh, so to machine only this surface, And no, I suppose here we have 40 millimeters, the workpiece 40 millimeters, and here well, let's say uh, 36 millimeters. So we remove two millimeters. Uh, the machining of this surface can take uh, from steel, can take uh, not some seconds, uh, approximately from 20 to 60 seconds. So it depends on the parts, on the uh, complexity of the part. And there are some manufacturing processes that are very fast. And especially they are fast when we make a lot of parts. The processes should be very fast. But for some individual productions, the processes are usually uh, slower because uh, we make some 
we apply some universal methods and they are uh, slower. But when we have a large number of parts to make, we should try to apply special methods of production and they are faster. Now, Mr. Professor, I have a question. May I ask? Yes, please. Okay, at the end of the lecture, we have already see, uh, see a video which we are cutting uh, material by using a cooler liquid. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And the, my question is, um, why don't we cut the material inside a water? I think it's much more effective, right? Uh, Can why don't we use water? Uh, no, no. I mean, I mean, why don't we use a, a small container that fulfilled by a water or any liquid cooler, and then we are cutting inside that liquid? Ah, you mean why we? Uh, so you uh, proposed to me, uh, you. Uh, uh, just a second. Uh, yes, maybe we can make uh, a small container and fill it by mm -hmm. use a mm -hmm. liquid, and then we can cutting inside the liquid, so it it will. There is no overheating temperature maybe is that also possible in this case to apply <laughs> oh, oh, okay okay it's a good question but uh, uh, the problems there will be some problems with uh, this technique mm -hmm. uh, for example uh, we cannot apply for this technique because uh, uh, the position of workpiece is horizontal. Mm -hmm. uh, but okay, if uh, if we make some vertical position and we'll we'll try to make some tank or some uh, pool for the cooling liquid, uh, and we try to uh, and we start the machining process. If uh, we use cooling, um, uh, cooling by some spray, mm -hmm. we can see the position of cutting tool. But mm -hmm. when we try to machine inside some tank, we cannot uh, see the position of cutting tool. Yes, mm -hmm. we see that it comes to the workpiece, but we cannot see uh, the distance remained to the workpiece. And when we start the machine, we usually try to uh, go slower before uh, the contact with the surface. Oh, yes, yes. So it's uh, good, to, uh, it, it is better uh, for us to see the position of cutting tool, even if we have the cooling liquid, uh, which goes by some spray. But also we can turn off the cooling liquid be, be, before the contact. So we see the real position of cutting tool before the contact. <clears throat> when we need to change our uh, workpiece, uh, we need to take it from the tank and we also cannot see where the fixtures, uh, some fixtures, the position of workpiece and so on. And also chip will remain at the tank. So, uh, uh, usually we do not apply such technique for metal cutting but uh, your question is right because there are some special methods uh, they were not given in this presentation but there are, there are some special methods uh, which are made in the tank of liquid uh, it is a group of electro discharge methods. So they are made in a special liquid uh, which acts as a cooling liquid and also it removes the uh, particles that were machined or removed from the surface. Yes. Okay, now I can understand it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, please ask the questions.
Well, I hope the uh, uh, meeting uh, today was interesting for you. Uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, my colleagues told me that uh, in Belgium you have a national day today, greetings. And uh, good luck with other, uh, other topics, other classes. Uh, in your school. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much for the interesting lecture. Bye bye.